Hi everyone, this is Arvind from Mind Magics, and today I welcome you all to this amazing session on SAP PM interview questions. This is one such topic around which we have been receiving a lot of requests from our viewers. So we decided to come up with this video. And in this particular video, we'll be covering roughly around 29 to 30 questions. And we have divided these questions into three categories. The first category of questions is for freshers. Next category is for the experienced candidates. And the third category is the most frequently asked questions on SAP PM. So without any further ado, let's get started with our first question. So the first question is, what is SAP PM? So the R3 SAP plant maintenance application component provides you with a comprehensive software solution for all maintenance activities that are performed within a company. The uniform graphical user interface is particularly user friendly and it quickly meets with acceptance thanks to the numerous possibilities that are available for tailoring it to meet the individual requirements as well. The data and the functions of all maintenance procedures performed within a company can be fully interconnected. The openness of R3 system enables you to use external systems that are integrated with the PM component, such as the geographical information system or the GIS, computer aided design systems like the CAD, and supervisory control and data acquisition systems, which are called SCADA. So this was a quick overview of SAP PM. The next question is, is the functional location structure indicator unique across the system? So the answer to this question is, yes, it is unique across the clients, but it is not unique across the systems. The next question is, what must you do if you have assets which are functional locations with the same number in several plants. So you must use the plant reference number as the first level of the functional location structure in this particular case. The next question is, what is the menu path for displaying the structure of a functional location in list form as a graphic? So the menu path is, as you can see on the screen, first you must go to the plant maintenance, then technical objects, after this, functional location, and finally, structural display. So if you follow this path, you will be able to see the display structure of a functional location in the list form and as a graphic as well. The next question is, give five examples of functional location structures. So guys, the five examples of functional location structures are, as you can see on the screen, chemical process, energy, a power station, property management, transport, steelworks, production line, and so on. The next question is, what steps must be defined in customizing for alternative labeling? So activate alternative labeling and indicators for the primary labels. After this, create a new structure indicator and define the labeling system. The next question is, how do you define your own view of an alternative label? So first, you must activate alternative labeling then define labeling systems for functional locations and then enter the label internal view. So this is the procedure that you must follow to define your own view of an alternative label. The next question is, what level of functional locations should be changed for alternative labeling? So the answer to this question is, second level functional locations are to be changed in changing master records, extras, then alternative labels, after this overview and change the label internal view. After that, choose the structure indicator and press refresh. The next question is, what is the menu path for creating a user profile? So the menu path to create a user profile is, as you can see on the screen, go for plant maintenance, then technical objects. After this functional location, next comes the labels and last the user profile. The next question is, what functions are determined by the category of the functional location? So guys, as you can see on the screen, the functions that are determined by the category of the functional location are change documents, status profile, asset, object information key, partner, determination, and measuring point category. The next question is, what are the activities of SAP PM? The SAP plant maintenance or SAP PM comprises of activities such as inspection, 
measure and establish actual condition of a technical system, preventive maintenance to measure and maintain the ideal condition of a technical system, repair to measure and restore the ideal condition of a technical system, and other measures that need to be taken using the maintenance organization. SAP PM is closely integrated with other modules such as SAP MM, production, sales, and distribution, personnel management, and controlling. And the data is always kept on current and the processes that are necessary for PM and customer service are automatically triggered in other areas. For example, a purchase requisition for non-stock material in the materials management or the purchasing area. So the next question over here is explain the meaning of equipment master. So equipment master pertains to one of the master data elements within the domain of operations and maintenance. That is the SAP plant maintenance model. The business object equipment is an individual physical object that is to be maintained independently. It can be installed in a technical system or a part of a technical system. You can manage all the types of devices as pieces of equipment. And since many of these physical objects are managed as assets in the asset management, the term piece of equipment was chosen for objects defined from a technical perspective in order to avoid the confusion with the activated tangible assets. You can also define and manage each piece of the equipment in the plant maintenance system in a separate master record and can set up an individual maintenance history for each one. The next question is for an equipment master record, what fields need to be filled in? So guys, this is a purely subjective question and it totally depends upon the equipment in use. Normally, the fields used to maintain the equipment master are equipment category, construction type, planning plant, work center, plant, maintenance plant, and location. You can attach equipment to another using a superior equipment field. The next question is how to configure the system to allow notification type change. So here you can define in the SPRO the allowed change of notification type. And there is a particular path that you must follow. As you can see on the screen, the first one or the first step is maintenance and service processing. After this, maintenance and service notification. Next comes the notification creation and notification types. And lastly, allowed change of notification type. The next question is, why change data do not display in order? So here you must check if the checkbox for change documents is checked or not in customizing. And the path to change the data display in order is plant maintenance and customer service. Then comes the maintenance and service processing. After this, you have maintenance and service orders. And then comes the functions and settings for order types. And lastly, define the change documents, collective purchase requirements indicator and operation number of interval. The next question is how overheads are calculated and from where the formula is picked. So let's suppose the client has a default setting of 10% overhead and now they want to change. So first plant maintenance and customer service, then comes the maintenance and service processing. After this, you have maintenance and service orders and functions and settings for order types. Then comes the costing data for maintenance and service orders. And lastly, you have maintain costing sheet. So here select the costing sheet that you are using and push the costing sheet rows. Next, see the column overhead rate and select the row and push the overhead rate. The next question is, do we need to run this transaction code IP30 for all of the maintenance plans which are scheduled on a regular daily basis or weekly basis so that if any scheduled objects exist, then it will get converted into the service order. So normally it needs to be run as per the business requirements and there are two ways to do it. The first way is by doing it manually as and when you run this transaction for the required PM plans like weekly or monthly with your scheduling parameter, you will get the maintenance objects. 
The second way is you create one variant. Now with this variant, create one background job as per your need and give the time period every day, every week or a month and the system will generate maintenance calls for you at the specified duration. So there's one more question which is linked to this question. So is it necessary to run the IP transaction code for each maintenance plans that we have scheduled? So the answer to this question is yes. If it is needed that the plan should generate orders, it needs to be scheduled either in background job or needs to be executed manually. The next question is, can a service order be generated automatically without running IP30 if we have scheduled a maintenance plan? So yes, you can get a service order, which is a PM order against this plant maintenance order with a control key as PM03. You can also get PR from PR. You can get a service order again from MM integration. If the auto PO concept is used, then auto PO gets generated. But if you want to avoid a lengthy process, you can use the code IP10. During each IP10 run, if the call falls within the date, you will get a maintenance call object that is PM order, PR, PO, PM order, then FO, which is the framework order, PM order, and then the service contract and value quantity. So these tabs you will get in PM order operation header general data. The next question is where to get the table which is having the user status with notification number. So from the table QMEL gets the object number using the QM num which is the notification number. So using this object number you get the status profile from the table JSTO. So using the object number you get the status object from the table and you may or may not get the multiple object status for an object number. So system status number will start from E and user status number will start from I. To get the text of the status, use the status number and STSMA to get the status text from the table TJ30T. The next question is how do you distinguish in a simple manner between equipment that is being charged and not charged for a service. So first define the different equipment categories and standard equipment reference categories for internal machines and customer equipment exist. So the next question over here is how do you define the equipment or the material loan or lease to a customer? So here read the documentation on structuring technical systems in the plant maintenance or service management modules. You need to define sales area for an equipment with the equipment category being one for which the equipment reference category is customer equipment. The next question is how can we block service to a customer? So it has to be done through the FL since most of the equipment belongs to the company and is loaned to the customer. So here deactivate the FL. This allows no further creation of the transaction data such as service orders. However, the existing orders can be processed and closed. The deactivation can be reversed at a later date. The next question is, where is a service contract assigned to a piece of equipment? The service contract is assigned to a material and material is assigned to the equipment in the equipment master. This functionality is not intended for managing equipment bought from the vendors where we are getting service rather than providing service. The next question is, is purchasing information such as vendor, date of purchase, etc. copied from MM to the equipment when it is being created? So the answer to this question is, it generally doesn't happen in the standard system, but it can be done with the ABAP batch jobs. The next question is, when you maintain an assembly in a piece of equipment, is it possible to get the maintenance history of the assembly or do you have to create it as a piece of equipment? So as maintenance orders are created for the FN equipment only, maintenance history can only be tracked at that level and not at the assembly level. Assemblies are mere structuring devices to have spare parts linked to the equipment in a structured manner. However, in PM orders, you can mention the assembly along with the 
FL or equipment. Depending upon your reporting needs, the ABAP could use the PM assembly field in the PM orders. The next question is, what is the use of field standing order and what kind of order it is? So standing orders are used to carry out ongoing maintenance jobs and settle them at the month end rather than creating a fresh PM order every time. Using order hierarchies, you could attach sub orders to the standing order and settle them to the standing order to provide you with a more precise record of maintenance costs at the sub order level as well as the budget monitoring at the standing order level. The next question is explain the integration points between PM and MM and FICO during the PM configuration. So if you talk about the integration with SAP MM and SAP PM, so there are a few integrations such as material master record for batch managed materials as equipment. Then you have the reservations and goods issue for the maintenance order. After this, you have the material valuation class or types for refurbishment materials as equipment. And finally, you have triggering PR from maintenance order. And now if you talk about the integration with SAP FICO, so here you have asset or sub asset numbering in equipment master data. Then activity based costing for operations performed through maintenance order. Third, you have settlement of accurate costs in maintenance order to the GL account, cost center, asset and so on. The next question is, what is the integration between PM and QM in SAP? So there are many interwoven activities which are present here. Let us consider one practical issue of spare parts purchase. We prefer to inspect incoming material for compliance of our requirements. While creating the material master, tick the post to inspection stock box in the purchasing tab. If we do not want a task list result recording oriented inspection in the quality tab, choose the appropriate selections. When that spare is received, it will go to the quality stock. The next question is how to configure the integration of PP and PM where it is being done in the SPRO and what are the prerequisites and what are the steps? So in SPRO under maintenance and service order, you get the generate data and then create system conditions or operating conditions. After this, check the box for PM reservation. In the equipment master under the location step, mention the PP work center and in the order header data, give the system condition as zero that is MC not in operation. So guys with this we have come to the end of this session on SAP PM interview questions. I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. If at all you have any queries or doubts related to this session then you can write them in the comment section and we will try to resolve them as early as possible. So guys thank you so much for being with us and I wish you all the very best for your upcoming interview.